Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and in this video, finally at level 30 on this character, I wanted to do a couple of videos in a row uh, talking about a few things you're probably going to want to do when you first hit level 30 on your first class. Now, I've spoken about leveling, you know, your other classes for cross-class abilities, your crafters, your levelers. At level 30, that all pretty much catches up with you, depending on how prepared you were to unlock your first job that's going to be the topic of this let's play series so when you first hit level 30 on your first class no matter what one it may be you have the ability to unlock your first job now you need to complete every single class quest for that first class so i already did all of my class quests for my conjurer so i'm able to grab this quest in order to become a white mage now the big thing about the job unlock quest is that you're going to need a specific other class at least level 15 before you accept this job in the case of unlocking white mage i needed to go quickly level arcanist to 15 before i could unlock it so every job has that specific class i'm going to put those requirements in the description of the video but if you don't know what it is when you get to the job unlock quest if you don't have the minimum level for the subclass you just talk to the npc to do the uh, quest it'll tell you what class you need at level 15. So uh, it's just a matter of if you want to be prepared or not before you even get to this point. Uh, now, because I'm Conjurer level 30 also, I have the ability to get my Unicorn mount. So <laughs> I'm going to accept that quest while I'm here as well. I honestly completely forgot about that. So uh, glad to see that that is where I'm at. Now, like I said, I have a bunch of things I recommend doing at level 30. The big one is leveling your cross-class skills. And uh, leveling your other classes to get cross-class skills, I should say. Uh, depending on your class, this is, you know, easier or harder uh, for which abilities you're planning to go to. For example, like Pugilist, uh, Rogue, and Lancer all have to pretty much level each other. Like, you need all of those things leveled. Uh, if you're a tank, you need, you know, the other tank leveled pretty much. If you're a healer, you need the other class, healing class leveled. It's a lot of, and, you know, Thaumaturge. It's a lot of leveling at this point, but... Uh, luckily, we can make use of that 50% EXP bonus to level the lower classes, and it makes it a lot easier. So I need to go over to the Central Shroud. And uh, unlike the class quests, these job quests are usually pretty easy. Uh, at least they're easier than... Uh, the job quests are easier than the class quests. So we're going to go do our first job quest, and then I'm going to kind of explain the differences of why jobs are so much better than classes for group content you know for solo content they do have some bonuses that help out but the big thing is is that a job takes a class and sort of makes it more proficient at a specific role so for example the conjurer becoming the white mage it's going to make me a better healer overall and on top of that you get uh well eventually we'll get holy so <laughs> and holy is the greatest ability in the game so uh it's one of the only things that matters so, uh, just a little update. So, I had a level Arcanist for this, and I had totally forgot that that was... I thought for some reason it was Thaumaturge that I needed at 15. So, um, <laughs> I, uh, I leveled Arcanist from 1 to 15. Took me only about an hour and a half uh, with the Friendship Circlet, with Rested Experience... Excuse me, with rested experience, with the EX, the 50% EXP bonus. And I honestly could have done it faster, but I was trying to force myself not to use my challenge logs up. I actually have quite a few that I'd like to get done today. Uh, the day I'm recording this is Monday, what is it, February 16th or something like that. And I would really like to get a lot of those challenge logs used because it's a lot of experience points that I could use on this job. I mean, look at that. If I could just do three dungeons, two of them through the duty roulette, and if I could just do... Well, I'm just going to do one guild test. <laughs> I'm not doing eight guild tests. That's not happening. Also, craft a few more high-quality items. I could uh, do some more supply... I, this I'm not going to finish this week, but this I should have really tried to finish harder. Retainer Ventures I've barely been doing, but I've got a lot of them to do, and there's a lot of free gill to be had there. So here we go. This is going to be... The quest, also, as you can see, I actually decided to do my bars. Uh, it's weird, though. I've redone them, and now I don't know where anything is, because I've not even really played Conjure since I've uh, redone all of these, since I've redone everything. All right, so, defeat the enraged creatures. Okay. I don't know if this is... The thing is, one thing I can never remember is some of the Conjure quests, you're better off just healing the NPCs. And they're telling me to stay out of their way. So I'm going to assume, like, I'm... Oh, pff, And I turned on Cleric Stance like an idiot. Oh, they gave me Stone Skin. Nice. I'll take it. 
I don't even have stone skin yet. I want that. Also, I don't. Oh, I don't have free cure yet, do I? Oh, that's lame. I don't want to use cure two. Cure two is a lot of MP. Are they actually killing anything, or did they just like give up on attacking? <clears throat> Never mind. That answers my question. Yeah, these job quests. Some of them are a little harder, but for the most part, they're really, really easy. In fact, I could probably just kill one of these surfed clouds. Wow. Okay. Apparently, I can very, very, very easily. <laughs> I did not expect it to be that easy. Okay. Guess I was... Oh, and my coral ring 0%. Probably should have checked my repairs first, but it's not really a deal. At all. Oh, man. I have a feeling these guys are bad. Oh, yeah. This guy looks like if he reaches me, he's going to be bad news. I'm going to go ahead and uh, kill him in a single hit. I don't remember. <laughs> okay. So, I remember them being way easier than the class quests. I don't remember it being this much of a <laughs> There's a lot of things I don't remember. And I don't feel like they've changed them. I feel like I was just less experienced back then. And that kind of affects... The way that you interpret these things. They said bring down as many creatures as you can. Oh. You want me to go after the water sprite then? The lindworm? What do you want me to go after? Oof. That looked like it hurt. It's alright. We got two healing NPCs here. Wow, he's just getting thrown back over and over again. I've just been in cleric stance the whole time. Come on. Just die to dots. Just die to dots. You'll be okay. Just die to dots. You'll die to dots, right? Yeah, he'll die to dots. I also don't have regen yet. A lot of abilities I really want to get. I think I might get regen from this quest, actually. I know Stone Skin's level 34. Which, by the way, if you don't have Conjurer leveled, like, and you need it for Paladin, or you need it for uh, Scholar, it's pretty nice to have. I mean, for Scholar, it's kind of just, like, before the battle. All right, we're skipping the cutscenes. Finishing up this quest. Now, there's a big thing with the first job quest. And where do I have to go? Camp Tranquil. Okay. So, the big thing with the first job quest is that you're no longer going to be going back to your class guild in order to unlock your next quest. So, a, a big mistake I see a lot of newer players make is they'll... You know, they'll finish their first job quest, and they'll go on their way. They'll get five more levels. They'll go back to where they had their class quests available. And they'll totally forget where they have to go for their job quest. To help with that, I'm pretty sure you can use the recommendations list. And this will help you find those quests. I'm pretty sure that's what you can do. Um, if not, I just highly recommend memorizing where this NPC is. Because you just don't want to go through the struggle of forgetting where he is and having to figure it out or look it up online. It's just nice to try and remember it. So it looks like Camp Tranquil is where we're going to be going. Uh, Alder Springs. That is in North Shroud, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. I actually need to go to Alder Springs anyway. I'm pretty sure that my next two Grand Company hunting logs... Well, one of them takes place in Alder Springs. Actually, I think... I'm pretty sure that it does. Where is it? Hunting log. I still need to do a couple more of these, too. I need to finish my rank 3 one so I can unlock the rank 4. I need to go for that. Central Shroud. Oh, I should have done that while I was here. Maybe I'll do it later. Um, and then we have Mortal Flames. Let's see. Alder Springs. And Corthus Dragonhead. Yeah, I'm pretty much right. I'm pretty sure the Dragonhead ones are level 30 or 35 or something like that. Because I know I can't even do my first quest. It's not a... Uh, the first quest isn't until Darkhold. So that's, what, level 44 or something like that? I think this guy will be alright. Oh, yeah, he's just doing an Alexandrite map and he's a tank. He'll be fine. He will be fine. Alright, so we're just going to walk our way down to the South Shroud instead of, like, teleporting or anything. I've been trying to promote that, but I haven't really, you know, been promoting it. You guys have seen me teleport a lot. And I'm running out of teleport tickets, so... Yeah, I should really get used to doing it. I actually kind of like using the Chocobo Keep when I'm not on camera and just, like, walking away from my game knowing I'll get there. At least I'll get there cheaper. And, uh, I don't know. I just like the Chocobo Keep. It gets me there. And you know what? It gives me an excuse to do something else for a few minutes and not just, like, 
kind of go that instant gratification route where I'm there and I'm doing the thing automatically. Where I have the patience to wait a few minutes and I'll still get there. And now I can do something else for the next two, three minutes while I'm waiting. Or I can enjoy the sweet chocobo music. Okay, so here we are. We have to go south a little bit more. And you know what? This is perfect. In, in the case of White Mage, this just happens to be perfect because I am, you know, I was going to name this video, you know, unlocking your first job. I might call it unlocking your first job and chocobo companion because Camp Tranquil actually has a level 30 quest to unlock a chocobo companion that can fight alongside you. You can level them up and it can make the leveling experience when you're doing leaves and fates a little bit easier just because you have this chocobo on your side, whether you want him to do more damage or you want him to, uh, you want him to, pff, I forgot which button was my jump button, or you want him to heal you or tank for you. Um, I'm going to go over all those different things with the chocobo companion. I don't know that I'll necessarily level with it. They take a very long time to level and, uh, You'll see when we actually get to it. But Camp Tranquil is actually the place I wanted to have to go. So now for White Mage, I just need to remember that when I want to do my level 35 quest, this is where I'm going to go. Your next White Mage, and it tells you your next White Mage quest will become available at level 35. All right, so here we go. It's going to give us a little cutscene. We're going to, yep, get the White Mage unlock thing. We're going to learn a new ability. Yep, it's got to do all this every time. The scene cannot be skipped. The arcane knowledge. Okay, I got presence of mind at level 30. That's a really good healing cooldown at this level. Okay, so now that you've unlocked your first job, what does that really mean for your character? So on the equip screen, the very bottom right, you'll see the soul crystal section. This holds all of your job crystals for all the jobs you unlock. So you're going to notice I'm just going to throw a soul. I'm just going to equip a soul of the white mage. When I equip it, it changes my Conjure to White Mage. I'm still level 30. It doesn't make you level from 1 again. That's not how it works. Basically, a Job Crystal is just an equip over your class. So technically, I'm still leveling my class right now. I'm still leveling a Conjurer. But I have a White Mage Job Crystal equipped over it. So a lot of people always think, do I have to level it from level 1 again? Uh, am I leveling my White Mage? What about leveling my Conjure? They both will level basically at the same time because they are technically the same thing. Uh, the White Mage can't be leveled. It's just equipped onto your Conjure class. So hopefully that clears things up. And also, uh, what does the Job Crystal actually do for you is another thing because I know a lot of people want to play Archer and they don't want to play Bard because they think they're going to become a support when that happens. The big thing that happens, and this should hopefully... Make it a little bit easier to explain. So if you look at my stats right now, I have what? 58 strength, 102 dex, 121 vitality, 120 intelligence, 162 mind, and 116 piety. When I unequip the soul crystal, watch my stats. See how, the, see how they all shot down? Your job crystal gives you a boost to pretty much all your stats. Let me see if there's one stat there that didn't change. No, nope, pretty much all of them went up. The ones that matter go up more. As you can see, like Vitality goes up by 5, Mind goes up by 10, Intelligent goes up by 4, Piety goes up by 10. You know, you just get a huge stat boost. And you know what? That makes a huge difference over the course of an entire fight when comparing a job versus a class. So that is one of the big, big reasons why the Job Crystal is such an important step for you when you're playing your character. So we now have our job. We should probably look at our skills, you know? You can see that my all of my hot bars were redone. So what do you say that we uh, we fix this around a little bit? I'm going to use my mouse to make it a little bit quicker. That way I don't have to go through using all the menus. I don't even remember where I had some of these things before, to be honest. <laughs> um, I'm going to leave this here. Remove that. Let's see. Cure. I wanted to get rid of that. Did I have Medica over there? I don't think I did. Hmm, where's stone 2? Stone 2 must be on the next menu. Yeah, so redoing your bars is another big part of this. Like I said, I'm just going to use my mouse just for the sake of speeding this up. Oh, there's... Oh, well, then we're stone 1. Stone 1. Actually, you know what? I want those there. Let's get rid of auto attack, get rid of return, get rid of teleport. I'm going to leave sprint there. I'm going to put raise here. 
Medica is gonna stay there. I'm gonna stick as soon. No, you know what? As soon as there. Why don't I just? You know what the funny thing is? I can literally just go back to the character screen and unequip it and see what I had. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm pretty close to what I had. I had this here. I had rays right there. Talk about a getaway of doing it. And I had Asuna over there. What about Repose? Where did I have Repose? I just didn't even have Repose on my bar anymore? Well, <laughs> good thing I decided to do this. Because I just decided, nope, don't need it. Um, and then I know that I had Protect over here. And I also have Presence of Mind now. So, let's put Presence of Mind... Over here. Presence of mind, really great ability. Actually, no, I'm gonna put repose here and presence of mind here. Presence of mind as a white mage speeds up your spell. It gives you a lot more spell speed, so it makes your spells cast a lot faster. I could show you that real quick. So, my normal cast time, if I hover over cure one, 2.48 seconds, takes this long to cast. When I use presence of mind, it's now. 2.14 seconds so it casts a whole heck of a lot faster and of course with more spell speed it helps increase it by even more so that's unlocking your first job but since we're here in tranquil anyway which is just a convenience because i didn't plan on that to be honest uh what do you say we unlock our feisty little chocobo so i can explain that system in this video as well so another really simple quest we're gonna have to go back up to central Shroud. I kind of want to take the chocobo key, but just want to be lazy. Lay back and talk to you guys, not have to hold the controller down or anything. Let's see. Hire a chocobo porter. Okay. Guess he can't take me there. That's a little strange. I could have him take me to Busker and Struthers and then just go from there, but I think I'll just mount up and go to Busker and Struthers the, uh, the old fashioned way. The only thing I will say, being level 30, I am still several levels ahead of the main story. I still have to do. Brayflox's long stop, which is, you know what? It's, I think Brayflox is 32, and actually, and Hawk Manor is 28. I think I mixed them up by accident. Um, regardless, though, I have a few dungeons to do still. Wow, that's really. I can't believe I can't remember that. <laughs> but well, you know what? You know why I know that uh, Hawk Manor is first because Brayflox's long stop comes right before Titan. Titan's level 34, and Brayflox is really the first dungeon where tanks just get wrecked. Like, as a healer, I don't know that I'll be able to DPS that dungeon unless I get a, like, geared or experienced tank. Because that, it's it's hard, man. It's really, really hard. <laughs> uh, uh, but whatever. It's going to be the first dungeon where we really get to, I guess, have some fun. Sunken Temple of Karn after that is also a really big uh, killer on new players. It used to be a lot harder. They've uh, changed it a little bit. Uh since it first came out. And then, what's after that? What's the level 38 dungeon? Level 38's Cutter's Cry. That's another optional dungeon. Then 41 is Stone Vigil. 44 is Darkhold. And 47 is Orm Vale. Pretty sure those are all right. Yeah, yeah, those are all right. So, uh, yeah. So, once we unlock our companion here, we're going to talk about that very briefly. Just show you, just give you the basics, you know, how to summon it, what it's good for, what are the drawbacks, and how much time you're going to have to invest if you actually want to level the little bugger. Trust me, I have uh, one that's, you know, rank 11 on my main account, and yeah, it takes a long time. <laughs> it takes a long time, and there's really... Not any major benefit, other than getting a chocobo suit to wear. That's always a major benefit. I don't even use mine because there's no reason for it, but that's besides the point. Alright, we're coming up. This quest is also really short, kind of like the job quest. It's mostly the travel time where you see me trying to be a responsible player and not just teleport everywhere and spend all my money. The big, I Honestly, I'd probably have like 40k right now if I just... if I A, if I didn't have teleport tickets, and B... If I didn't, like, take any steps at all, just teleporting all around, doing everything, because I don't, because I don't care. And remember, this character, I'm trying to do it without, like, help from my main character or anyone that I know. I'm trying to, like, do it authentically. So, I don't want to just be like, oh, well, I could, I could always sneak a little bit of money into my retainer. I could find a way. You can't just send money across characters like that. 
but what I could do, I'm not even going to say it. <laughs> I could uh, I could get the money over to my character. I've got friends that I trust that could trade it to me. But we're not going to do that. We're going to just quickly finish this quest. Dispatch Broods is. Oh, we unlocked it, but I still got to finish the quest. Where do I go? Wait, Broods is. Oh, up there? Perfect. That's where the hunting log is. Did he actually give me a Gasol Green? Yes, he did. So now we've unlocked the Chocobo Companion. We still got to finish this quest, but we've unlocked the Chocobo Companion. So now my menu, I have this. So this is your Chocobo menu. And this menu pretty much has everything you need. So you have the ability to summon a Chocobo now to fight alongside you. In order to summon the Chocobo, which, <coughs> which does have a time limit on how long it can stay out, you need to buy and use Gasol Greens. Uh, for every Gasol Green you use, you'll summon the Chocobo. He'll stay out for a certain amount of time and then go away. On top of that, um, you're just going to need one every time you want to summon him. Also, withdraw option. Now, while your Chocobo is out, you can't mount on any... Like, I can't ride my Behemoth while my Companion Chocobo is out. However, I can mount the companion chocobo and dismount him so it's highly recommended that if you plan on leveling your chocobo a lot to put your company chocobo on your hot bar so you can manage to mount and dismount them favorite feed is something that you're able to do if you have a chocobo stable you can feed them to uh, make them gain experience points and if you feed them the same food over and over again they, they get a favorite feed and when they're out in the field here, you can give them feed and increase their stats. If you give them one that's their favorite feed, the stats will be doubled. And then you just have basic commands. Follow, free stance. Uh, follow is just whatever he follows you. Free stance, defender stance, healer stance, and attacker stance. Uh, change around his play style. If it's free stance, he'll just do whatever he wants. Defender stance, he'll focus primarily on using tanking abilities. Healer stance, healing abilities. And attacker stance, attacking abilities. However, a rank 1 chocobo doesn't really have too many abilities. So skills as you can see they have their own talent trees i highly recommend you can respec but i highly recommend just picking one tree and sticking to it until you get to rank 10 just because it's just better to have something focused on a single tree so for example i'm gonna go with hmm i am a healer but i do have other classes i think i'm gonna go with the attacker tree and then appearance you are able to again using that feeding system that i told you about with the chocobo stables you are able to get different colors but that would be a whole nother video and you can equip them with different bardings to sort of change their look around i have a lot of different bardings so i'm gonna give mine i'm gonna make give mine the black mage barding even though he is not a black mage at all even though it's not changing his look either. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to put the Casal Greens right there. We're going to demount, and we're going to summon our Chocobo. Now, let's see if it still says he's rank 0. Yes, he is rank 0, so he has no skills yet. So we're just going to go ahead and just, you know, kill these things like the quest asked me to. I'm also going to go over and uh, kill another thing as well. Could have started with stone there, but it doesn't even matter. So he's just going to run up and attack. He's also smart enough to... Well, he's not really that smart at all. As you can see, the Chocobo is uh, he's pretty dumb. Yeah. You're going to learn that about your Chocobos. They're pretty dumb. They're really dumb. <laughs> oh, and here's the Toadstools that I needed. Trust me. They're really dumb. And I'm not... And it's not just because they're bird brain Chocobos either. I mean, just the AI... Like, especially the healer AI is really, really bad. <laughs> eh, trust me. You'll see. You'll find that out for yourself at some point. All right. But another thing about your Chocobo is despite its rank, its level always matches your level. That's a big thing. So, you know, even though I have a rank zero Chocobo, he is level 30 rank zero. And, you know, if I'm on a level one, he'll be level one and rank zero. You know, those are those two stats are independent of each other. And another thing is that your Chocobo also takes some of the experience points that you gain. And it's they're attributed to him instead of you. So you see I'm getting 247 EXP. And it says plus 70%. And then I'm getting 20% more for my Chocobo. Why is my Chocobo getting a 20% bonus? I wonder if it's just taking... 20% bonus from something. Oh, because the EXP chain bonus. I'm an idiot. So I completed that quest. 
But if I didn't have him out, I would be getting more experience points. So that's where you kind of have to figure out, hey, do I really want to use my Chocobo? Or do I just kind of want to level without him? You also can't queue into the Duty Finder while your Chocobo is in your party. So, like I said, there are a lot of drawbacks. But it can be fun when you're playing out in the open world and you're just doing quests and fates and leaves. To have a Chocobo companion out, level him up. It's another sense of progression that is nice early on. But once you start trying to get to, like, rank 5 and 6, it takes a really, really, really... Like, you're going to see, oh, yeah, I only need 4,000 experience points. Rank 2, that's nothing. Trust me. By rank 3 to 4 or 4 to 5, you're going to be like, why the heck do I need so much experience points? Luckily, we do have a challenge log that helps speed it up. One that I highly recommend doing, kill 100 enemies, free 4,000 gil, and the first one, defeat 20 enemies comparable level to your own with the chocobo. That's 5% of a chocobo's level, no matter what. And the second one, defeat 100 enemies, is always 10%. So that's a free 15% EXP bonus when you're leveling your Chocobo. And trust me, when he's at the higher ranks, you love the challenge log. An extra 15% bonus experience is a pretty big deal. Bird in hand, what is this? Must own an estate. That's probably the one that teaches you about feeds or, uh, or Chocobo stables or whatnot. And now, we have our own little trusty Chocobo friend. According to my companion list, he will allow it to be out for another 28 minutes, and then he will go away. So, hopefully that helped explain a little bit of what you're going to want to do. As you can see, I also put my first point into the skill tree. Now, at rank 2, I'm going to get 2 points. So, you could very realistically, at level 2, get Choco Regen and Choco Drop and have all 3 abilities at once. But what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to start progressing down the list here, the attacker list. Enhanced Strength, Increased HP. Uh, new ability, Chocobo Beak has a dot equipped, enhanced accuracy, enhanced critical hit rate, Choco Rush uh, with a stun effect, and then he's got Choco Blast, which is an AoE effect in a cone. So, I'm looking forward to leveling up my Chocobo. Hopefully, you guys are looking forward to the next part. Um, not sure what I'm going to do for the next video yet. I was I didn't expect this to be so convenient to do both of these things in one video. But, thank you for watching. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Let's play. Say goodbye. Don't be rude. Alright, sorry, my chocobo's being rude.